Hi everyone and welcome to Busy Bird Live. It's Wednesday, 21st of August. My name is Blaze. I'm Les. <laughs> We're here for a... Right now. <laughs> we do. No, this might be the first time someone's watching. We do a live most Wednesdays and we talk about anything to do with books and writing. Now, last week, Les, we mentioned we were going to talk about fiction. Did we? We did. And we are going to uh, concentrate on short stories today. Why, why is that? Why short stories? Because stories written by short people are underrepresented in the publishing industry. Okay. <laughs> no. Next week, we, is it next week? Yep, yeah, Thursday week. week. Thursday week, the 29th of August, we're going to be launching issue eight of Untitled. How about, Leslie, tell people a little bit about the history of Untitled? So, Untitled began as the brainchild of a really good looking young man. Really creative. He was younger. <laughs> imaginative. Very talented. Um, and, I don't know why I'm But, with Blaze, we thought that. What would be great would be to have an anthology that is more open to various forms of fiction, whereas existing anthologies focus on sort of niches of fiction, so there's areas that don't get represented. So we thought it'd be great to have an anthology which is just open to everyone. All we want, our mandate was, we just want a good story that we can read. And if that's satire, horror, contemporary, romance, sci-fi, whatever the case is, as long as we enjoy it, then we're going to read it. So it's really aimed at promoting new and emerging authors. Um, going back to issue one, this features Tess Evans, who's had three books out with Alan and Unlin. Um, Ryan O'Neill, who won the Promises Literary Award for Fiction in 2017 with uh, Beverly and Careers. And he was shortlisted for the last one. Yep. yep. Yeah. George Ivanoff, best selling young adult author. So this is published in 2009. Uh, you know, so when we first started this, we were pretty naive. I was never naive. <laughs> we, we were frustrated uh, ourselves as I've writers. I've been frustrated. You must be thinking and, of someone else. And we were discussing how hard it is to get published. So this is why we thought, oh, let's just start our own. We were disgusting. Um, <laughs> we were disgusting. Discussing. Discussing <laughs> how to get published. That one features uh, A.S. Patrick. Partridge, as it's actually pronounced, who won the Miles Frank couple years ago for Black Rock, White City. So there's a lot of. Uh, so we published a lot of people yeah. when they were sort of emerging new yep. writers. Yeah. Yep. So we're quite proud of it. Laura Elvery is in the last issue, who's really recognised as one of the best short story writers in the country. Uh, you know, and I'm sure, like, if I look through every issue, I'm going to find people that have gone on so to. Samantha Allen Bound, Eliza Jane, Henry. Yeah. Henry Jones. Yes. Writer Jane Henry Jones, I should say. Murray Steed, very, very well known, well respected writer and mentor. Mentor. Um, Luke Thomas is a great short story writer. And I should have just sort of singled people out because we wouldn't publish them unless they're all great. Mm. So it's a what I wanted to kind of highlight though is in our naivety when we first were thinking about doing this, we didn't know how much work it was going to be. I did. So as an example, this, this current issue, and most of the issues have around about 15 stories in them, but we, we received four, around 450 stories as submissions. So there's a lot of reading because all of the A lot the of reading. A lot of reading. 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 Oh, it was reading. So are you on crack today? Don't tell people. <laughs> Don't tell people, sorry. We'll now, see, now I've lost my train of thought. Thank you. Choo -choo. <laughs> so, a lot of reading, exactly. 450 um, submissions. And every story gets read several times at least. At least twice. At least. And then if Not it gets bumped even. up to the next round, it gets read twice again. Yeah. So it gets read by everyone. You know, but that, it starts getting bumped up. Yeah. So it, you know, and we do read them blind. Um, and that's why we request to be braille. Ironically means that a couple of people have been published more than once in this particular issue only because they were, they were read without us knowing whose they were. 
So, let's talk a little bit about, you know, what makes a good short story, Les. Sam, what makes a good short story? Do you want me to? Yes. <laughs> uh, it's got to have... Louder. A good st- it's got to have a good Louder. start. Louder. Go on. Shush. It's got, to, it's got to be engaging the whole way through. Okay. Yep. Yes, just, and uh, I think too, just, that's a good pacing. point, because quite often what we find from submissions is that people don't really know how to finish their story. Or how to start them. Or how to start them. It's sort of like... Or how to write the middle. Well, <laughs> not how to... <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, the pacing's really different to yeah. longer form. In Untitled, sorry, I'm going to single some people out. You have people like Ryan O'Neill, Laurie Steve, A.S. Partridge, Laura Elvery. Sorry? Still. No. I'm trying to make people dizzy. Juggling. Who are just masters, Luke Thomas and another one, who are just masters of the short story form. And, you know, it's... I think that's actually also a good point, Lise, that people think that a short story is easier to write than a novel. No, it's not. It's actually quite How a skilled think that? craft because you have a much shorter span of time to develop your character and the story and all of that kind of thing. So Happy George is another one, great short story writer. You have less time to sort of get into the story. Yeah. Melissa mm-hmm. Fagan, who wrote one of my favourite stories. Uh, you should actually make a list of all the, all the people who've ever been in Untitled over the last 10 years. You should do that today, Sam. <laughs> Yeah. But the story should be uh, engaged and it should have a journey. The character should begin somewhere. They should want to be going somewhere. And they should want things that they either accomplish or don't accomplish, but it should be uh, a journey from beginning to end. And you get a lot of stories where I'm just thinking, it's not really a journey. And what a lot of short story writers fall into the trap of is like, here's his character, Sam, for example. And now here's two pages of who Sam is. And it's just a dossier of that character. And then it's like, and now let's continue the story. And that's just boring to read because it's just exposition being delivered at the reader to arm them enough information so they can then go on and understand the rest of the story. And the great short story writers are able to see that in and hook you so you're thinking, okay, that gives me a little bit of intrigue. When is that going to be answered? When that's answered, then there's a little bit more intrigue posed. So you're engaged to keep reading. And I'm sure people have experienced that where... When they're reading, they think, I'll just read another couple more pages. And then they keep doing that, and they keep doing that, because the story engages them. Yep. What do you, what other things have you found from short stories, from over these 10 years of reading them? What do you think is the kind of number one, other than that, you know, over-explaining the character, what other kind of mistakes do people make? Uh, one of the big problems to see is overriding, where people feel like, oh, I've just got to tell you the same thing over and over, because mm-hmm. the only way to get the point across, which is not the case. Um, I find often there's no second act, it's like the whole setup of the first act for 90% of the story, and then it just resolves itself in the last page, and it's like, well, nothing actually happened in the middle of that. Yeah. Uh, some stories serve as a, I don't know the best it, but like, almost like, they're delivering a joke and then here's the punchline, that's the climax, yeah. and it's not actually a story, it's just a really long anecdote that should probably be told by a comedian. We, and we have had quite a few stories where all of this fantastical stuff happens and then they wake up and it was a dream. Yeah. And that's classic high school, you know, stuff that you write when you're 14. Yep, <laughs> I'm still writing now, huh? <laughs> but there's a lot of different things, I mean, a short story should have a purpose to it. And I think one of the other problems, and I see that with novels too, is a lot of people, they play around with structure, which is fine if you know what you're doing. Mm. But people, some people play around with structure without actually understanding why they're doing it or how it serves the story, and then you're reading and thinking, this will just be a really nice linear story that you've screwed around with. So they're trying to be clever yeah. and, and wow well the reader with their amazing structure. Yeah, so I'll go back to Ryan, who plays around with structure, but he always understands what he's trying to do. and he's works really hard to realise that. Uh, whereas you get a lot of people just sort of jumping all over the place and it's like, you don't know why you're doing this. It's like, oh, well, just the way it came to me at the time. But that's not really showing command of your craft because then you're just actually writing randomly mm. to suit this spill of your imagination. Yeah. So in, in terms of when people are submitting to us or other anthologies, which there aren't as many around as there once no, a few of them have died for whatever reason. Sleepers on like went, wet ink, it's gone. Um, and I think that's because of 
because of the amount of work that goes into choosing the stories, that's a big part of it. It's quite a lot of resource, oh, you know, and, and, you know, we're very appreciative of the team behind this because all of the readers, <laughs> we are, all of the readers put, gave their time um, voluntarily for, for the experience. Yeah. Um, but, and all of the writers are actually paid for their stories. Yeah. So, that, you know, there's a lot of resources that go into this. Well, unfortunately, for the people who create anthologies, uh, I don't know if I can say this, but I will. <laughs> Sam's got a gun on me, just outside shop. These are not money spinners for us. No, no, we do it for the, we, these because are, we think short stories are awesome, and yep. we want them to so for that one. <laughs> <laughs> that one's on the cutting room floor. <laughs> Yeah, so they're not money sp- I imagine they're not money spinners for anyone who's actually ever developed an anthology. You're doing it for the love and the passion of the anthology and to give new and emerging writers some exposure. Mm-hmm. And it's really about that, you know, hey, Australia, hey, world, here's some great writers that you can read. Yeah, and, and we're proud of the fact that yep. so many of the authors in here uh, have gone on to bigger and better things. Yep. You know, Corridor of Demetrius is another one we published early. So it's also just really gratifying to say, you know, we recognise these people had talent before the whole world woke up to the fact that, hey, geez, they are good writers. Yeah. You know, so it's actually really nice to spot them. And I, I like to think with some of these writers, I won't say with all of them, definitely not that guy, but with some. Lizzie. Yeah. <laughs> but with some of these writers, I like to think that, you know, Publishing them has encouraged them to keep yeah. writing. Yeah, because it's uh, submitting to publishers is, you know, so difficult, and there are so many rejections. Yeah. But I think any any you know any time they get published should be a celebration. And, yeah. Yeah, celebrated, and hence the reason we have a big launch. Um, I mean, rejections are really um, flattening. You know, so when you get a success of any sort. It's a huge motivational thing mm-hmm. for any writer. Mm-hmm. I mean, when I get rejected, I just write back to the publisher and say, I reject your rejection. <laughs> you need to look at my manuscript again. <laughs> so it's just, it works constantly. I'm they sure love that it. would go down really well. They love it, <laughs> yeah. What else can we say about short story writing? Uh, another thing I think that people don't do enough of is a rewrite. I think one, okay. one, no. uh, you know, one, one or two drafts means it's ready. Yep. But they need they need honing much more before they're actually ready for publication. Well, so I'm going to go back again to Ryan because I know how he works. Is before he even submits, oh, sorry, sends the story out to his alpha readers, he works on it so hard to get it. As he p- makes it as good as he yeah. can. Yeah, and he gets to the point where he's not seeing anything wrong with it anymore. So what he's getting is fresh perspective from other people. Whereas you get people who are sort of like, oh, here's my first draft. Uh, can you give it to read, or here's my second draft, can you read it for me? And yeah, okay, this is what I think you need to work on. And then they're just going, yeah, I knew that, and I knew that, and I knew that was an issue. It's like, well, why'd you give it to me? You should have actually addressed that yourself. Yeah. You know, there's no point getting... There's a little bit of laziness there, isn't it? It's a bit of laziness, and some people have a bit of ego because they're expecting whoever they're giving it to to go, this is the most magnificent thing I've ever read. Don't touch a single letter. It's perfect. It's fantastic. Yeah. And I don't know that any story could be perfect without before it's gone to editing. What about, what about Colonel Sanders' story? What's that? He invented KFC. Okay. It's a great story, isn't it? <laughs> right. He was a mass failure until he made. Yeah. KFC. And wasn't he like sixty or something? I don't know. I just he wasn't young. Anyway. How old is Sam? Off topic. Oh, I can't believe you brought him up then, Sam. Jeez. <laughs> He's vegan. <laughs> Sam's vegan. Okay. So, what other what other tips? Short story writing. Uh, have you read this book, the new one, Sam? I don't think you have yet, have you? I've read some, some of it, yeah. What good does that do us, Sam? <laughs> Tips for short story writing. Um, Re- write and rewrite. Pl- uh, once they plan, because some people work better when they just sit down and write, which is fine. What's the perfect length of short story? 2,872 words. <laughs> it's not. 2,873 words. A short story can be anything from six words 
to maybe. Well, technically, six like words would be like microfiction or flash fiction yeah, or something. Yeah, but and 10,000 words, you go into that another letter form. In Australia, the sweet spot's about 3,000. 2,500 to 3,000. Most yeah. journals, that's what they're looking at. Yeah. We publish 8,000, up 8,000, but you'd really have to be earning every word of that. And generally, we're look about 3,000. Yeah. You get like the more accomplished short story writers, people who are recognised for short stories now in Australia, like Ryan, Laura Elvery, Julie Coe, Laurie Steve, I'd be hitting about 2,000 to 3,500 word mark mm. pretty consistently. Yeah. So, and if you look at most journals, that's what they're looking at. And, I mean, the, what other journals are around these days? There's Overland. Overland. Kill Your Darlings. Do they do short stories or are they more... I don't know if they're just publishing online now. Okay. Um, I don't know. Lifted Brow? Lifted Brow, yes. Yep. yep. So Lifted Brow, uh, going down the swing, I think still sporadically mm -hmm. produces something. The big issue, fiction edition. Yep. Um, also another, another way to get your short stories out is to send in for competitions. Yes. That's really good practice because it makes you finish something. There's so many people who are writing short stories who are, might have five stories on the go and none of them are finished and you can tell that when they get sent in because the ending is usually you know, kind of nothing and, and that stops them getting over the line too. Yes, it does stop them getting over the line. Yeah. Okay. Hey. So, <laughs> I'm going to tell you who is in this issue that is going to be launched next week. Are we launch the issue or the author? Sorry? Are we going to launch the issue or the author? The issue. Okay, just because I saw like a giant slingshot outside, so I didn't know what that was for. Okay. So, you just going to pull the, the authors back and the just authors are them. Rhiannon and Raphael, I know her. Fran Collins, Ashley Kalegian Blunt, Pamela okay. Baker, Shush, Deidre Ryan, Jenny Del Mastro. Zena Schapter, Doug Pender, Edwina Shaw, Dean McAllister, Joanne Anderton, Matt Ward, and Jessica Chapman. Good mix of men and women, too. Yes. Oh. You know when Zena Schapter turns in another story, he goes, another chapter. Okay. <laughs> I might read a little bit of a story list. That's the imprint page. Um, page 27. Just read page 27 of every issue. This story is actually uh, the inspiration for the front cover. Okay. Okay? I'm only just going to read a little bit of it. So Let's read a little section. So maybe read like... Yeah. So... What's the title of the story? Types of Oranges I've Never Eaten. Okay. See, orange. Yeah. <laughs> By <laughs> Ashley uh, Kalegian Blunt. Kalegian Blunt. I apologise. I thought it would have been Malaysian, but I don't know. I'm just guessing. The type of orange your mother lovingly places in a red and green stocking with your name embroidered in gold thread and hung in front of a crackling wood fireplace on Christmas Eve. The type of orange swiped off your little brother's placemat while your mother's back is to you, rubber gloves to her elbows and hands submerged in greasy dishwater. The type of orange your grandfather grows in his orchard, which belonged to his father and was planted by his father before him. As you sample the new season crop, your fingernails digging into the fruit's tough but yielding rind, he puts his hand on your shoulder and casts his eyes beyond the groves to where the sun sets into the Pacific calm. One day, he says, this will belong to you and your brother. The type of orange that is piled with 200 others in a wooden street vendor cart on a cobblestone corner in the slanting sunshine of a crisp January afternoon. The sun wizened Turkish man squeezes several of the oranges in the medieval looking machine at the head of the cart and you pay him a few lira for a plastic cup filled with juice so sweet the nerves of your teeth scream and then minutes later drop the cup in a pile of garbage because there is no street side recycling in Istanbul. The type of orange your new love plucks from a wicker picnic basket and peels, a fine spray bursting so he can brush your lips slowly with one perfect segment, his 
its ripe scent and cool touch flooding your senses as you lie under a canopy of flowering jacarandas. That part is the picture. So we encourage people to buy the latest issue of, of Untitled, which is available. Everyone who buys one on gets a free orange. Website. Don't tell them about it. I don't know how to pack an orange in. A <laughs> no, you don't get a free orange. <laughs> no, you won't get a free orange. The dream's over. Uh, so but we can we can include an orange for the extra twenty nine dollars on your phone. <laughs> yeah. Okay, you can be packing those. <laughs> so we really encourage people to purchase a copy of this from our website. And these. And these. And, and the other ones. There's from our some, new website. From our new website. And so we have a whole set now of eight. And every time we do one of these, we say it's too much work, we're not going to do another one. But uh, knowing us, we're suckers and we will keep doing it. It will depend on how well this is. So if you buy a million copies. Yeah, then we'll definitely keep doing it. My thought I'm tired of the million copies. Yeah. Um, so yes, that's the short story segment for today. What else do we need to tell people about, Les? Let me hold those. Shout outs to Carol Howlett and Donna Campisi. Hi Donna, hi Carol. Hi. <laughs> it's good that you gave Donna a run. <laughs> She's not like a Sorry? Yes. yes. <laughs> okay, we have our excellent manuscript assessment competition running it was due in last week but we please stop <laughs> but we because we got the new website we because the new week website was up we it, we had a week or so where um, this was not accessible so so this is on the old website and the new website took over the old website but it took over the menu structure from mm -hmm. slightly before we put yeah. this up. So that means we've extended for another month, which yep. is fantastic for everyone. So 15th of September. So what we need people to do is to pitch their book, not pitch themselves, but pitch their actual story yep. in order to win a Sam, pitch a book. <laughs> <laughs> no. Go, pitch it. No, she's writing something. She's got, she told me. Okay. Go, pitch it. Two sentences. No pressure. <laughs> no pressure. Uh, the internal monologue of a person in nursing home. There you go. One sentence. There you go. One See? sentence. One sentence. Top it's that simple, percent. and that tells you a lot. There's a character in the nursing home, it's an internal monologue, ask them questions. Why are they in the nursing home? What's wrong with them? What are they going through? What is the monologue? Is it a good nursing home? Because most of them are just like evil, aren't they? It's like, no. I mean, that's what the movies tell me. All the movies tell me they're like all evil. But if you have a short story collection, if you actually like short stories, you can put yourself under the fiction with short stories. The novel. You can put it under the novel section. Okay, there you go. Because it's fiction. Okay. So, what else is happening? We have our Bali retreat in November. Yeah, we have our Bali retreat in November. And we have a book camp in October. So, check out our new website because we have lots of awesome stuff on there. And we have some freebies that people can download. And okay. yes, but also check out you love short stories if you're going traveling this is why we made it a, a little pocket book because it's a perfect traveler for the train or if you're going on holidays and um, support new and emerging writers in Australia we need yep. to do that mm. okay we don't we don't want the book industry to be filled with books with of celebrities we want some real good writing this is why this so, is so you're saying celebrities don't produce real good writing. No, it just feels like, it just feels like the industry the celebrity it just industry. feels like the publishing industry is going which fair enough because publishing is a hard gig, but they're going for books that are an easy sell. Okay. We want books that also have good stories and are written well. Okay. That's my two cents for this week. I'll also be at the Words in Winter Writing Festival last Sunday. <laughs> so if you're in the time machine, you can go see it. The rest of you are just out of luck. Aren't you, aren't you going to be at the... Yeah, that's a little while away. Is it? So that's right. six weeks away. Right, right as Victoria? Yep. And what are you going to be doing there? Um, eat, drinking their tea, eating their cookies. You're also going to be talking about what? dialogue at the no. Society of Women Writers 
uh, fiction seminar in October. I'm very kind to address that. It's not the same date. No, it's not. Mine's <laughs> September 30th. We're trying to get we'll talk about that All right, next well, week. Okay. Let's go. There's one more thing you need to talk about. What's that? Tonight. Oh, yeah, open mic night tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, so you can come and read your short story. You can hear Sam sing again. Sam, what are you singing this week? Oh, this goodness, sake. I've done that before. Okay, we're waffling on now. So Sam's fault. come to open mic night if you're in the area tonight at 7 o'clock. If not, we will see you next week. See ya. Bye.